Some things that I'm judging is cause of some of the things that I have been in, trying to help someone not go in. If you get ready to stick your hand in a fire and I tell you it's hot, you don't listen, you're gonna get burned. I'm trying to help you before you get burned. When I talk about things dealing with the church, it's not everybody, it's not all churches, it's not all denominations, if you want to say. It's not about this sister, it's not about this brother. It's about these spirits, it's about darkness. It's about uh, self. It's sometimes, most of the time, it's just us as individuals. I'm gonna give you a prime example. Solomon chapter three, I know I've been talking, but guess what, I'm moving on. Chapter three, Solomon chapter three, so he wanted understanding and uh, God gave it to him. And the thing is, as I did the Jabez uh, video, he 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 gave uh, Solomon more territory. He expanded it. Whoa, he expanded, even when he expanded him to give him how to, 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 to build the temple and everything else, so much, so much. And I'm a, I, I talk about Solomon some more, but I'm gonna go ahead and just deal with this judgment area. Uh, when I get to chapter three, uh, 1 Kings chapter 3, you want to start probably at verse 16. In the head, and it talks about so Solomon, wise judgment. Solomon, wise judgment. And it says, now two women who are harlots. These were harlots now. <laughs> Listen to me. Harlots. And if you get a chance, go to, because uh, this was some sisters. Go to uh, Ezekiel. I, I said this in another previous video, but I think I gave the wrong chapter. It was uh, chapter 16. Ezekiel chapter 16, read it all the way to probably 19 to 20, even when you don't have to deal with some of the curses if you repent and turn from your ways, but how God uh, dealt with certain things where some, some daughters who were God's chosen ones, who he loved, how they became harlots out there for the king. And because while, while I'm getting to that, I'm going to get to certain spirits, uh, if the Holy Spirit allow me. I'm going to deal with certain spirits. Uh, but sisters, be careful. Be careful that you're not giving yourself to the world. Be careful that you, you're not dating God on Sundays or whatever day you might call your holy day. And then other days you're looking for a man Monday through Saturday. Be careful. And, 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 and he's not a man of God. And be careful for some, some of them that you think that might be men of God. That's why you have to be able to judge. Some people might have to warn you. Uh, and you might say, well, there's no, there's some, there's good men out there. And same thing to you, brothers, because there's some Delilahs out there. They, they will lure you and take all your strength, take all your strength from you. Uh, and, and the main thing is they just wanted a good man, but yet they had a little bit of wildness still in them. I'm, I go there. I'm a go there because there's a lot of things that's being taught out here versus character. And Christ is more on feelings and what they want and desires and what may feel good or what looks good that might not be good for you. It is good because God said it's good. Marriage is good. Relationship, good relationships are good. But it depends on the motive. It depends on who is actually the Pharaoh over the situation. First Kings chapter three, chapter six, verse sixteen, chapter three, verse sixteen. Now two men who were now two women who were harlots came to the king and stood before him. And one woman said, "Oh my lord, this woman I dwell in the same house. I gave birth while she was in the house. Then it happened the third day after I had given birth that this woman also gave birth, and we were together. No one was with us in the house except the two of us in the house." Nobody but them. And they needed somebody to judge this situation. And this woman's son died in the night because she lay on him. And I'm pretty, as we know the story, she's going to lie. So she arose in the middle of the night and took my son from my side while your maidservant slept and laid him in her bosom and laid her dead child in my bosom. And when I rose in the morning to nurse my son, there he was dead. But when I had examined him, in the morning, she examined him. That means she judged the matter. I had examined him in the morning. Indeed, he was not my son. She had made a declaration. She had already made a declaration. There was a discernment there. 
there was a discernment that you, if someone can go, boy, that, that I can run with that. That's a revelation behind that because if I discern something, somebody to discern something, no different than, than women. You all have a certain instinct, no different than men do. Hold to it. If not, seek God and he will order your steps. He will reveal it to you. It says, but when I had examined him in the morning, indeed, he was not my son whom I had born. Then the other woman said, no. There her go her lying behind. No, like many people is out there. Some people in the body of Christ, carnal people who, who likes to lie real quick. No, it wasn't me. It was her. The name game. Name, game, blame. So much that comes with that. No, but the living one is my son, and the dead one is your son. And the first woman said, no, but the dead one is your son, and the living one is my son. Thus they spoke before the king. Thus they spoke before the king. Quick break. Real quick. There was a parable Jesus used that if there's a situation going on between between you and the adversary. He said, go make it right between you and your adversary. Uh, when you go before the judge and, and, and you haven't uh, did right or, or made right with it, that you're, you're in a being sentenced and then you'll have to fulfill that, that time. You might have to serve time. Like we always used to say, uh, don't do the crime unless you want to do the time. Where it tells you that ever said, if you got a problem with a situation, if somebody owe you something, whatever somebody might do, you better go ahead and do it before they go to the, the judge. Because when the judge get and he called the bailiff, the bailiff's never going to come and they're going to, uh, and once that judgment call. So I just trying to use certain things because there are certain things in life that you can do. And, I, and I'm, I'm bringing forth a point. And guess what? I'm bringing forth justice to certain things that just been foolish that we've been talking about. Things that we've been saying, how we've been saying things, uh, brothers and sisters in the body of Christ. I'm not dealing with the world because the world knows that there's judges out there. But it seems like it's so amazing when we came out the world, we as people who came out the world, forget. Like, I can do whatever I want to do in the body of Christ and everything just goes and it's okay and you can't judge me. Where did you get that from? Somebody took a scripture, like I said, and just run with it and don't have a revelation. Don't have wisdom and don't even have an understanding. This they spoke before the king. I'm at verse 23. And the king said, the one says, this is my son who lives and your son is the dead one. And the other says, no, but your son is the dead one and my son is the living one. Then the king said, this is the king brought before a king. Matters brought before the king. Matters that's going to be brought before you queens. Matters going to be brought for you kings. There's a queen of Sheba that came to hear a lot of Solomon's wisdom. And guess what? She ruled over land. I guess she didn't judge, sister. I guess she didn't judge. Then the king said, bring me a sword. So they brought a sword before the king. And the king said, divide the living child in two and give half to one and half to the other. Then the woman whose son was living spoke to the king, for she yearned with a compassion for her son. She yearned with compassion. He he watched, he observed her. There's more I can say to it. I'm just trying to move on because I'm trying to get to some other, just a little other area that the Holy Spirit is trying to lead me to. But she yearned with compassion. So basically, he he recognized, they tell you, you can, you can read somebody's uh, body expression. You can judge. They say you judge the body special wrong. Oh, sometimes you don't. They, they got people who are special in that. I can judge people. Uh, I look at people and tell if they're telling the truth or not. I can listen. I have guys give me ears to listen to certain things. Might not get it, but he, he, I'm still in training. But can can catch it, especially when it's in the kingdom. When it's God's voice versus all these other voices, man's voices versus God's voice. Then the woman, verse 26, then the woman whose son was living spoke to the king for she yearned with compassion for her son. And she said, oh, my Lord, give her the living child. 
and by no means kill him. But the other said, let him be neither mine nor yours, but divide him, this evil witch. If I was in the world, I probably would have said something else, but I don't have it in my heart to say it. But this evil witch. So the king answered and said, give the first woman the living child and by no means kill him. She is his mother. She is his mother. And all Israel heard of the judgment which the king had rendered. And they feared the king, for they saw that the wisdom of God was in him to administer justice. I don't know what's in any other book. Mine is the King James book. But it says, for they saw that the wisdom of God was in him to administer justice. I got a king. I got a, a God. I got a Lord and Savior who loves justice. And we're his disciples and uh, we're going to administrate justice. Uh, there was a, 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 a disciple, Stephen, who was talking to some of the Pharisees and Sadducees, who, as I say, they were just unfair people, just unfair people. These people was leaders, supposed to be believers, church people, who was supposed to be the example for the people. But yet at the same sense, they was hurting people. And, and, and yet at the same sense, they was up under the, they loved to sit in Moses' seat. They stuck up under the law. They love to sit in Moses' seat. And here's, here's Stephen in the book of Acts. He was martyred before any of the disciples. And he's speaking to them truth. And he's speaking justice to them. That they didn't even recognize the king of glory. That he was here. They stoned him. They thought they was doing the justice by stoning him when he was basically bringing judgment, a righteous judgment. He was speaking righteously and they stoned him. As I said, throw those stones. Come one, come all. As I read Solomon administered justice, I realized the Holy Spirit has the gift of administration in us. There's different gifts in the uh, body of Christ that dwells in some of us. Paul might have got nine, ten of them. There's there's much more. God's revealed certain things to me, but y'all, you know, I'm not going to try to make myself way up here. There's much more gifts, but that was one of the gifts of the Spirit is an administration of gifts. Why would he not have you to judge? Jesus administered so many things. Here come some of the, the parents with John and James wanting their sons to sit on the throne with Jesus as, as his return when, they, when he comes to rule over his kingdom. And Jesus judged the matter. Jesus sat there and judged the matter. Some of them tried to rebuke certain people who was casting out devils. And Jesus judged the matter. Leave them alone. Why? Why? Why are we not supposed to judge? If you can come and give some type of comment, my the comments on my videos and for those who see it, just send it. Like I said, if you can subscribe, if you can subscribe, uh, I don't know how they work. Dealing with certain things, uh, dealing with uh, YouTube, but subscribe, send them, share them, uh, share them. If you're listening to certain people that you're actually under and they say you're your pastor, I don't care if it's internet or if it's at the churches that you share. If you if you are a, 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 a kingdom brother, sister, king or queen, and you've been having these problems, share it. Share it with those up under you that might try to make you, that try to bring you down when all you're doing is being who God called you to be and allowing the Holy Spirit to utilize uh, righteous judgment, bringing forth justice uh, before you. You could be the one to hit your chest and then you could, there could be a sinner that's coming in and saying, woe is me, forgive me, Lord. And that sinner is the one that's going to walk away in right standing before God's eyes because he brought forth justice. He said the just shall live by faith. So the thing is,